Hi guys, this is Nate, Reach 3D Printers. Last video here for the Repeteer operations. So the first thing we're going to do is plug in our printer. Um, then connect. You might get a setting like this. It says connection error. Open settings, sure. Um, it's most likely that you're in a different COM port. So check COM port 3 or whatever. Make sure your uh, baud rate is 250,000. Um, hit apply. Hit OK try to reconnect see what happens we're connected you should see your LCD screen if you have one should flash um, the next thing you're gonna do is if you already hopefully you already have a file opened if you don't click add say lantern whatever you're doing it'll load two possibly if you already had one anyways um, put this in a convenient place I like to keep it slightly away from the edges um, Next thing you're going to do is go to Slicer. You can immediately slice this, but you might want to double check your settings. Two shell thicknesses. 60 is your speed, or what I called 60, which is 30 to 60 max. Adhesion type. Um, if you're having problems with warping based on your environment you're printing in and speed you're going, uh, brim might be necessary. It's not a bad idea, but for the most part, I try it with none just to see how it goes. Quality. 0.2, I would say, is the industry standard. Just run for that for now. Um, you don't really need support unless there's overhangs. We don't have any like major overhangs in this, so I'm just going to say none. Um, you do have a little bit of these little jog outs, but and if you did do support everywhere, it would literally add support in the middle of some of these. Like it would build it on top and then. You know, maybe that's not a bad idea. Maybe you can try that. There are some overhangs here, now that I think about it. Um, these might be doable, but these guys are going to print in midair. See these teeth hanging down? I just realized that. So, yeah, you're going to have to go ahead and put everywhere on there, just to be on the safe side. Um, let's see. Um, maybe like 45, I prefer to print at 45, maybe kick it up once you get a good start going, that way it does go to 60. But for slicing, we're just telling it to average out at 45. Infill density, honestly, 10% is okay for just looking at stuff, it's a pretty solid. If you're doing something that is going to be used for um, holding something, like a, I don't know, a brush holder or with light. Um, it, you know, it's got to resist a little bit of pressure or like um, a clamp of some sort. You can probably do it in the 20 to 30, 40 range. If you're building something that takes a massive amount of pressure, you may want to push up into the 80, 90 um, to make it more solid, 100 possibly. But um, like for the 3D printers that I print, I think I print everything at either 50% or 66%. Um, it doesn't have to be 100% solid. Very few things would need that unless, you know, it was a, a part that's literally like a bracket to hold on like a motor mount or something you might want to do solid. Um, okay, enable cooling. That just says that you want the fan to be um, operating off the D9 and all those settings are a little more complex. So hopefully you just hardwired your fan. Extruder, if you're printing a PLA um, and you don't have a bed, 205 is probably op optimal. If you do have a bed, it's probably nice to print with a heated bed, honestly, even in PLA. Um, it just helps it adhere better. It helps it less warping. Um, but 205 regular is fine too. Infill density, you got to at least put it at something. Jack o' lantern wouldn't need much, you know, 17%. Sounds good. Slice it. So you just click over to hit the slice with Cura. It's going to give you an estimated print time. This says eight hours of print. Now, probably because the infill or the support is pretty massive. There is a lot of support material in there. On the inside, on the outside, it's everywhere. Um, plus we have a lower print setting. If you change this to like 0.3 and you didn't need support for an object this size and you were printing at like, let's say 60, um, 
you can probably cut that time down to like four and a half, five hours maybe. Three hours, 44 minutes. But as we all know, we cannot print with the teeth like that. Um, those teeth just can't print in midair. Let me show you why. If you're going up layer by layer, it's got something to support on it. And then all of a sudden, you've got these gaps. And then you've got this big gap. Next thing it's going to do is try to print in midair. These things are going to try to print in midair. So obviously that's not going to work. Um, so you've got to support it somehow. Um, if we show layer range, that can be a more obvious identifier of what I'm talking about. You're right. Not going to print like that. just can't happen. Um, so there's two options. You can either go back into SketchUp and add your own support so that your printing doesn't take eight hours. Um, you can print thicker. Um, but let's see what this does. Point 0.2, which is a little higher resolution. Take five and a half hours. So this is obviously a pretty large, large intricate print. Um, it takes up a quarter of the bed an eighth of the entire uh, volume. So another thing you can do is reduce the size of it. If it's kind of like a trinket, you know, it doesn't have to be an operating, a piece of operation. You're just making like a little lamp with a tea light candle or maybe an LED that might work. Um, slice it again, much smaller. The whole thing only takes an hour and three minutes for something that size. Um, so, if you did it at point 0.3, and even reducing the speed to get slightly better results as far as speed reduction, you're still only looking at 55 minutes at point 0.3 millimeter thickness. So, that, that which makes it the fastest is definitely your quality. If you wanted something like crazy intricate, point 0.05 millimeters, which would take forever to print, I will show you how long that would take. Even for something that took 55 minutes, you're looking at five hours for the same quality. So keep that in mind. And yeah, the quality would be like insanely accurate. Look at all those tiny little layers. All right. So that's not practical, obviously, unless you want something like that. But maybe you got to go a little bigger. Let's go like uh, 0.75. Make sure it's in the bounds. It looks like a decent size. Slicer, 0.2. We do need support because we didn't build it into it. Bring this up to like 50. I don't think this really matters a whole lot. 205. Slice it. This is probably what we would actually do, kind of a balance of time and accuracy and size. So we've got a pretty decent sized piece. It has full support. It's taken four and a half hours. It's kind of a long print, um, but it, it is printing an excessive amount of support material. Um, you can see the difference between the support material before that to that. Well, it mostly took it out from underneath. All right, so the next thing you guys would do is um, once you've got a time frame that you like that is actually going to print, you would go and either save for SD print. You can edit the code if you wanted to. Um, this is all the G code. Um, you can save it. You would leave include start and include job finish commands. Save it as a G code file. L. Um, yeah, we can call it Lantern 8, but it's going to save it as G-code. Save. All right, and then you put that on SD card and then run it from the LCD screen. If you're doing it from your computer, because you don't have an LCD screen, for instance, you would, at this point, um, it's going to print whatever the print preview is. You can either hit print here, or you can hit print here, um, but you would just hit print. It would then go through the auto homing. I actually don't have my power supply hooked up. I'm just hooked up through the USB. So it would start auto homing. Um, in here, once it starts auto homing, you can change your feed rates. You can change um, your fan speed if it's hooked up to the D9. 
bed temperature, extruder temperature. Um, it gives you an, a readout of current positions and whatnot over here. It's trying to tell it to go to these locations, but again, it's not hooked up. So, um, And you saw that it automatically pushed this up to 100%. Um, anyhow, that is basically all that it takes. Um, it's also going to visually try to draw you information, live previews of what's actually happening. Um, anyhow, thanks guys. Hopefully that was helpful and insightful in some ways and wasn't too long and boring. Um, if you have any questions, you can always reach me on the G Plus forum or email me from the website. I hopefully will get back to you before too long. Um, have a good one.